Hi there, Sam Sorbo here for the Sam Sorbo Show. I've decided to do a, to, to do a segment that's just mail, just for a few minutes, uh, because I am getting a lot of mail. I really do appreciate all of the missives that I get everywhere. Uh, as you know, you can find me um, on YouTube, also on Rumble, um, where I've been assured that they won't take down my interviews. Uh, YouTube did take down an interview recently with a doctor who has not been dis, dis uh, what is it? It's not disbarred, uh, dismissed from the AMA, and yet YouTube saw fit to take him down um, because it wasn't me, it was him. I'm blaming him for getting me taken down. <laughs> you know what's going on. All right. Um, it's so that's where the videos are showing also at sorbos.locals.com. And you can tune in there for extra content that you won't find anywhere else. Uh, so now let's just go straight to mailbag. At Sam Sorbo, I don't understand what does religion have to do with getting a vaccine shot for COVID? I am a Christian myself, and I got my vaccine shot back in April of this year through my local health department. People are using religion as a crutch to avoid getting a vaccine shot. By the way, this was an answer to Kate Corrigan coming on the program and explaining that she got a religious exemption, that she didn't want to get the COVID shot. She had the exemption. Her religious university told her that she wasn't, she was no longer invited to come to graduation. She got them to change their position. They did it very quietly without letting her know that they just changed her web, changed their website. And then when the website was changed, uh, Kate Corrigan started getting a bunch of hate, hate uh, and threats from the student body and the faculty at the university. Um, including some other punishments with regards to classes that she was uh, enrolled in and stuff like that, just for standing her ground for the religious exemption. And so this person wrote to me, um, people are using religion as a crutch. So I, I reject that term, uh, and I'll get back to that, to avoid getting a vaccine shot. It's a crutch to avoid getting a vaccine shot. Um, and also people are listening to the negative media and a bunch of gossip going around about people dying from the vaccine shot. Well, of course, some people die from the vaccine shot if they just get the cheapest one or if they already have health problems. That's why I decided to go through my health department. So <laughs> there are a couple of sort of glaring uh, issues with this missive, but I do appreciate the challenge. First of all, how dare you claim that they're using religion as a crutch if it's something that they object to because their religion forbids it, who are you to say that, that that's not appropriate? Now, Looking at the numbers of this virus and the fact that the death rate in 2020 was no greater than the death rate in 2018, even if you take into account, well, people weren't um, going out and there were fewer car accident deaths, there were more deaths in nursing homes because, uh, because governors put COVID patients into nursing homes where they should, that where they least should have gone, it almost evens out. You could make the case that there should have been more deaths in 2020 because of COVID, but there weren't. So a person has to weigh getting injected with a so-called vaccine and, and I argue the term vaccine because just because you change the name doesn't mean it's the same as the, uh, the older vaccines. And there are a lot of people out there who struggle with the older vaccines um, because they saw the negative ramifications themselves personally. Child's perfectly fine one day, literally the next day the child ends up in the hospital as a result of the vaccine or some supernatural thing. And so I guess if you believe in the supernatural, that, that could be. Um, 
So to characterize somebody using it as a crutch, if it were something that was obvious to that person that it worked, which it's not obvious, according to the study that's just come out of uh, England, a full 50% of people who are now suffering from the COVID Delta variant have been fully vaccinated, 50%. So I'm not convinced that it is at all effective in uh, many cases. I know that all the numbers are jumbled, but for England, for the British to sort of admit to that figure was kind of like, and it was from a reliable source, although don't, uh, I can't remember where. Um, uh, and so people and people are listening to the negative media. So what is the negative media? Is that media that just doesn't count? And a bunch of gossip. Okay, is that just, I, I understand you mean gossip. Okay, yeah, I don't listen to gossip. I look at media and I look at, I look at reports and I look at the report from the CDC from 10 years ago that said that uh, cloth masks are completely ineffective and I look at the email from Fauci that predates everything, basically, that says that cloth masks are completely ineffective. And so that's what I base my decisions on. And I'm sure that Kate Corrigan also looked at all of that. But most importantly, the reports are overwhelming that the vaccine was created using aborted fetal baby parts. That's a problem that creates a valid religious exemption, period. So try not to characterize people who have valid religious concerns about getting something implanted in their body. Here's the thing. Are you against rape? Why would you force somebody to be injected with a foreign substance if they were against it themselves personally for any reason it's unconscionable now if you want to sequester yourself that's your choice if you have the shot what do you care you're protected or is it that you don't feel protected what is it so I wrote back um, that I was going to answer this on the show, but I also, I did write this. Suffice it to say that each individual as a creation of God must make their own decision regarding the shots. It's of utmost importance not to consider everyone as simply the same because they were created equal. It's ultimately the Christian doctrine to allow each individual sovereignty over his or her body and no other. Sadly, there are many people who disagree with this view and they work actively to undermine it, convincing others to forego their Christian teaching in favor of fear. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1.7. So I wanted to thank the person who wrote me that for being one of those people who thinks things through and asks questions because that's important. Okay, let's see. I love this. Uh, Nick, thank you for writing. My wife and I are high school teachers in Pensacola, Florida, and just wanted to say thank you guys for fighting the fight. So many in this world are afraid of bucking the system, but you guys stand up for what is right. You are a beacon in such a dreary world. So I want to thank you for that because um, having the support of even teachers is, is um, it's a blessing for me uh, because I do criticize our education system uh, soundly. And so the idea that there are teachers out there who feel the same way, and you know, I want to encourage you, um, see what you can do to get out of this perverted system um, or at least get the unions out of your school. So my understanding is, especially here in Florida, and I, I believe this is nationwide, if 50% plus one of your teachers, so just over 50% of the teachers 
in, I guess it's the district, opt out of the union, you can get the union out. And that means the union won't be training your school board and won't be, you know, whispering in the ear of your school superintendent, which means that you get the communist ideology or the over the that overreaching communist ideology out. Now I can't answer for individuals, right? Because there are a lot of communist individuals who are serving on school boards who serve as school superintendents, who, who are teaching our kids. Um, but, they're, but, but that is a path forward if you're still going to be in the system. And I understand teachers who stay because they, they feel like they're doing the kids a service. I get that. Uh, I don't know how effective it is, but I, but I do understand it. I do understand it. Um, Okay, this is also a response to Kate Corrigan talking about her fight for religious liberty at a religious institution. Did I say that? Uh, listening to her, I could have guessed she was homeschooled. There tends to be a level of poise and confidence in logical thinking in homeschoolers that doesn't seem to be there in many traditionally or public educated young people. That is the truth. Because typically homeschool children are challenged by adults a lot more than school children. And I don't know, have you ever had a conversation with a kid in high school, goes to public school, and you try to have a conversation and you get monosyllabic answers and grunts? Um, so that's what, so, so that's the difference between that and a homeschool child. Now, of course, some children, you just won't, they just won't open up. They're just, that's not who they are, right? But by and large, homeschool children are, um, Better, better socialized and more well-spoken. Uh, let's see, Sorbo talks the decline of New York City with Seth Barron. So this is in response to my interview with Seth Barron. Corruption has a very long history in New York. However, corruption only exists with the unspoken permission of the people. If the people reject and refuse to tolerate corruption, then it will largely disappear. The problem with New York, Baltimore, Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Atlanta, et cetera, is that the people in those cities vote for corruption. Hey, if you vote for it, don't be surprised when you get it. And uh, yeah, as I recall, Seth Barron was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to save the city. It was, it's so far gone at this point, sadly. Um, and that, but it's true, we are too complacent and too accepting of corruption. And we do, we also feel like there's nothing left for us to do because in school, we're taught to sit down, shut up, raise your hand if you wanna ask a question, follow authority and don't question. And unfortunately that leaves us sort of at the whim of the, the politicians, the leadership, leadership, right? We need to be electing stronger, better leadership. And you know what? We need to be getting in the races and participating and speaking up. And I know, you know, I do this podcast and um, my, my, my focus is education and entertainment. Um, but we all have different giftings and we, we, I want to encourage you as a patriot to step up and get involved somehow. Find somebody who's running for office, go knock on doors for them, host events for them, raise money for them. If you're not going to run, then get involved and support somebody who will and get them elected and at least, at least give the other side a run for, for their money. Okay. Last one, uh, Sam Sorbo talks the dangers and defects of critical race theory. Like you said, when people think of themselves as victims, they don't take personal responsibility to correct the situation. And that's true. We are all victims of someone. Only if we acknowledge it and accept it. You're only a victim if you accept the job offer. So 
Um, if we hold on to the past, it can feed repeated cycles of hatred and self-pity, making that all some people think about and talk about every day. It's very, it's very easy to get sort of usurped into this victimhood mentality. Breaking free of the past is one way of describing forgiveness. That's why I like this one. It doesn't free the villain, villain, sorry. It doesn't free the villain, it frees the victim from having to continuously relive the worst thing that happened in their life. Critical race theory shows that a person can defiantly choose to be ungrateful no matter what blessings they have in being in the United States. If God gives a sunny day or a rainy day, some people will complain either way. That muttering is something that offends God. Clever. Uh, and then it goes into the, the children of Moses choosing to be grateful instead of ungrateful. Um, and uh, Prager U does have a video about gratitude. In fact, I think it's Dennis Prager who says the number one ingredient to happiness is gratitude. And I would agree, I would agree with that to, uh, to a degree. The number one ingredient to happiness is choosing. You have to choose to be happy. And so I wish you today that you choose to be happy, that you make it your, uh, that you simply make it your choice and that you find reasons to be happy because it's just as easy to find reasons to be upset and miserable. The woman in the glass house on top of the hill can, can have her day ruined because she breaks a nail. And the most impoverished individual can have, uh, can have his day made because the warmth of the sun is on his back. And so it is entirely your choice. It's your choice to be a victim and it's your choice to forgive. Uh, you know what, I'll talk about that just, just briefly. Um, I hold that there are three types of forgiveness. The, the, the first kind, now, I, now I'm gonna tax my brain. The first kind is um, when the person comes to you and, and asks for forgiveness, you, you, you owe it to them to forgive them. The second kind is when you choose to forgive them because you need to let it go. Because if you don't, you are continuing to be their victim. And so you forgive them in that respect. In both of those cases, you do not have to invite them back into your life. That is not included in the forgiveness equation. You can forgive them and let them know that they're forgiven. And then your choice is whether you continue the relationship because sometimes relationships are simply broken. If somebody lies to you, to your face, you can still forgive them and wish them well and say, you know what? You go on with your life. I won't be putting myself at risk anymore. And if they don't ask for forgiveness and they never know it, you can still forgive them. They know not what they do and just send them on their way and not invite them back into your life and be done with it. The third forgiveness is the hardest. It's forgiving yourself, forgiving yourself. You have to learn how to forgive yourself because you're the reason that you got hurt. You put yourself in that situation, whatever it was, there's a part of you that still holds you to blame. And so the idea is repent to yourself, apologize to yourself for getting in that situation, and then promise yourself it'll never happen again, and then forgive yourself and accept yourself again. And it works. And you can find freedom and happiness that way. Uh, so that's my sermon for the day, I guess. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me on the Sam Sorbo Show on mojo50.com and also wherever fine podcasts are, iHeart, uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, um, all of them, Spreaker.com as well. Uh, and then if you're joining me on video, I want to thank you for joining me for this segment. Uh, 
be sure to like and subscribe and uh, tune back in for further segments. And if you want more of my great content that is not available just publicly, go to sorbos.locals.com. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Sam Sorbo. Hi folks, Sam Sorbo here. Are you tired of seeing all of America's resources being drained away? I know that um, I'm kind of fed up and I think the time for talking is over and it's time that we took action to try to save this country. And there is one little thing that you can do. Uh, you know, we, we saw our friends and families, jobs and businesses sort of wither on the vine while America's huge corporations had a financial windfall this past year. Uh, that doesn't sound fair to me. That doesn't seem right. Um, I think it's time that we put our money where our conservative values are. Are you happy that you're funding corporations that donate to Planned Parenthood? I'm not. I have found an outlet and I want to share that with you. So email me at buyusmade at protonmail.com. Buy, B-U-Y, usmade at protonmail.com. Just email and I'll give you some more information. But it's time that we started to make our dollars speak for us. Thanks for listening. This is the Sam Sorbo Show. Mm-hmm.